We're, we're, we're welcoming this morning uh, Steve Bowden <coughs> from Montgomery County Student Foundation's office. And he's going to outline, I'm sure, the four independent uh, foundations that the Montgomery County Public Schools have in uh, automotive construction, hospitality, and information technology. And Steve is the supervisor of all four of the foundations and the coordinator of this effort on career guidance and uh, choice of life uh, careers. So welcome, Steve. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much. All right, I, um, I thank you very much for having, uh, having me here. I should say us here. A colleague of mine, Kelly Johnson, is also joining. And so we're, we're so grateful not just to be here and be able to share some of the work that we're doing, but also um, for the long-term commitment that this um, organization has provided our foundations. I know that I've been with the district now for uh, 31 years, and we have had consistent support from the North Bethesda Rotary Club, Club since day one to the point where when I entered my job, Bob Fangmeyer and others kind of took me under their wing to uh, guide me with the industry to make sure that I not only had solid educational background, but I also had a good understanding of the industry, which is so very important with the work that we do. So we thank you for the long-term support. Um, I also see Victoria is, is on your group now, and she's been a, a volunteer with our architecture and design students now for is it two years, Victoria? Maybe even a little longer. So um, she's on our construction board and also um, mm -hmm. volunteers in the classroom quite frequently with the students. So I really believe that the connection between the real world like this and um, in the schools that excite students, that engage students, and quite honestly, it's what makes me want to come in to the office every day because I know that we're helping kids with real life, um, you know, real life uh, support. Um, I don't know how long is allotted for, for us to speak this morning, but I do have a, um, about a 10 minute video that I can share, or I'd be happy to speak with you and answer questions, or I can do both if the time permits. So if someone could give me just a teeny bit of guidance, would you oh, want to... Um, both will work, Steve. Both? Uh, well, oh, wonderful. We, wonderful. Uh, we close our meeting out, uh, if at all possible, by 8.30, and we'd like to have a little time for questions afterwards, but you can do both. It's all your oh. show from here. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, well, well, d d you know, I will not be offended if you send me the hook and say that uh, you want to switch, uh, switch gears here, but okay, let's start with the video then. That would be great. Um, Kelly, if you'd be willing to... Um, to um, go into present mode, there we go. She's gonna present the video. And as soon as it's done, I'm gonna jump back on. So let's see, I don't hear the volume, Kelly. Are you ready to rev up your education? How would you like the opportunity to design and build a home as a high school student? Working. Would you like to learn skills and attain certifications that can propel you further and faster into an IT career after high school graduation? Yeah. Get involved with one of the Foundation's Office's automotive, construction, or IT courses. Be the architect of your future and get the education you need to succeed. All MCPS students can participate in the Foundation's programs during high school and classes are offered throughout the county. Many courses are offered at the Thomas Edison High School of Technology in Wheaton. Free bus transportation is provided from your home school to this location. Please talk with your guidance counselor to find out more information. The Automotive Trades Foundation offers Montgomery County High School students career education in automotive technology and auto body technology at several locations. As a licensed used car dealership, students experience hands-on work with real vehicles and also engage in the soft skills of auto sales and customer service. In addition, local business partners provide enriching experiences with dealership visits and job shadowing activities. Through the use of the rigorous NATEF certified curriculum, students are eligible to attain valuable industry certifications before they leave high school. Whether it's post-secondary automotive courses or entry-level positions in the job market, students are geared towards automotive success. 
the Automotive Trades Foundation delivers three courses to students. Foundations of Automotive Technology, Automotive Technology, and Auto Body Technology. Foundations of Automotive Technology is designed for new students that are just beginning in the automotive field. At the completion of the course, students may choose to continue in the Foundations of Automotive Technology course or move into the Automotive Technology or Auto Body Technology programs. I'm going to MC to learn more about cars and get a business degree so I can open my own shop. It's an industry that's always growing and changing. I mean, there's new software, new updates, new parts. There's always something new that you can learn. Automotive technology students are offered an opportunity to train for skilled positions in the automotive professions. This program develops students' technical, analytical, and communication skills. Students are provided instruction and hands-on experience in many areas, including engine performance and repair, brakes, suspension and steering, electronic systems, and heating and air conditioning. They will develop and deepen their knowledge and skills in the maintenance, repair, and sales of vehicles. Through work-based experience, students work to attain ASE certifications. The Auto Body Technology Program prepares students for a career in collision repair and or painting services. Students learn through authentic experiences as they use tools and materials to repair panels, doors, windows, and other damaged parts of a vehicle. Students utilize both virtual reality programs and dealership quality paint booths to learn painting techniques used in repair shops and dealerships. And this is just a great opportunity for some kids who do want to go into trade to get exposure and training up front and get a career path to take them into the trade, into college, into advanced studies, into their own businesses, wherever their kind of life path takes them. And we have technicians that are making over $100,000 a year fixing those cars, diagnosing those lines of code, making the anti-lock brake system work correctly, the accident avoidance system. These are highly technical and fun, interesting fields to work in. The Construction Trades Foundation is comprised of seven programs that contribute to the completion of a student-designed and built home. Students in all construction courses engage in project-based learning by working on a real residential construction site. The home is built according to plan by students in the following construction trades courses. Foundations of Building Construction Technology is a one semester program where students begin to develop skills in a variety of construction areas. Students then choose to continue their studies in the construction class of their choice. These two year programs include carpentry, masonry, plumbing, construction electricity, HVAC, and architecture. In carpentry, students learn about various aspects of the home building industry through hands-on learning. In masonry, students focus on proper techniques for laying brick and block in a variety of patterns and configurations using mortar and grout. In plumbing, students learn about the installation, maintenance, and repair of many different types of pipe systems. Construction electricity orients students to the electrical trade. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, or HVAC, engages students in a variety of basic and advanced heating, ventilating, and air conditioning principles through a combination of classroom and worksite experiences. Principles of Architecture and CAD Technology provides an opportunity for the design and engineering of physical structures from original concept to complete architectural and engineering plans using AutoCAD. Students create a series of drawings with the final assignment being a set of working plans, which may be used in the construction of an upcoming house. It's just a really good learning experience. And I learned all this stuff on a job site that's not just in school. You don't learn from a textbook. You do it hands-on and you see it in the process. All Construction Trades Foundation high school students have the option to earn dual credit by enrolling in the Construction Management Program at Montgomery College. Students will be able to earn the required credits for high school graduation while potentially earning up to six credits at Montgomery College. The Construction Trades Foundation encourages all students to consider this opportunity by providing scholarships for eligible students. Student service learning hours are available in all of the construction programs. Valuable industry certifications for OSHA safety and NCCER credentials are earned at the successful completion of each course. To further build a successful future, local community business partners provide industry visits, product seminars, apprenticeships, job fairs, and scholarships. 
This cooperative venture between educators and industry professionals provides unique experiences and opportunities to Montgomery County students. You're learning the life skills of basically showing personal responsibility, making sure that you live up to whatever it is that you said you're going to do. The parents' eyes light up when they see the actual salaries that these kids can make. Just graduating from high school, a lot of them are offered jobs by employers in the county even before they're ready to go on to community college. The Information Technology Foundation oversees the development and implementation of all computer science courses within Montgomery County Public Schools. Students have the option to take individual computer science courses or enroll in one of four main programs of study, which include the Academy of Information Technology, Cisco Networking Academy, Network Operations, and the Computer Science Code.org programs. All programs are based on curriculum from nationally recognized industry partners. For students who are interested in smartphones, smart homes, games on Xbox or, uh, or PlayStation or being networked with people all around the world over the internet, there are programs in CTE where they can learn about these things and also learn about the good jobs that are available in those programs. The Academy of Information Technology, or AOIT program, helps students prepare for college and career opportunities in today's digital workforce. AOIT is supported by an advisory board of professionals who serve as consultants, mentors, and guest speakers. They also arrange internship opportunities and promote scholarships within the program. Students will be given a foundational background in information technology, then launched into one of the three areas of specialty. The Cisco Networking Academy helps meet the increasing demand for professionals skilled with information and communication technology and networking expertise. Through this program of study, students utilize hands-on experiences, train as entry-level network technicians, and continue into advanced studies in cybersecurity, engineering, or IT fields. As a capstone to the course, students may engage in a professional experience, such as an internship, or take an advanced placement or dual enrollment college course. By the end of the program, students will receive a comprehensive foundation of microcomputer and network technologies in preparation for attaining international industry credentials. Network Operations offers students the opportunity to learn technical and problem-solving IT skills. Courses are developed and taught utilizing a unique business model design. This approach allows students to acquire IT knowledge, receive customer service training, and apply those skills through real-world curricular experiences. With the support of leading IT businesses throughout Montgomery County, students within this program of study have the opportunity to earn vouchers for CompTIA certification tests. ComputerScienceCode.org is one of the hottest, most accessible programs of study available in MCPS high schools. With a focus on coding and computer sciences, students will also learn about cybersecurity, robotics, ethical issues, and more. The fundamental knowledge this program offers prepares students for the modern workplace, regardless of their ultimate field of study or occupation. Automotive, construction, IT, this is the future. We have a multitude of trades. You can try some things. You can see if you like this career path, automotive, IT, construction, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, biosciences, you pick it. Come check us out. The Foundation's office is helping young people in Montgomery County Public Schools acquire the education and skills they need to be career and college ready. Contact the Foundation's office or visit our website for more information. Please join us for a tour of our facilities during our annual open house events. With the partnership of Montgomery County's business community, the Foundation's office will continue to provide a foundation for student success and prepare them for future automotive, construction, and IT opportunities. Great, uh, thank you for uh, watching. That was our uh, promotional video that we created a few years ago. And since that time, we've actually created another um, 501c nonprofit educational foundation called FARM, the Foundation for Restaurant Management and um, Hospitality and Tourism. So um, my name is Steve Bowden. I work for Montgomery County Public Schools. I've been there for 31 years now in various different roles. Um, what got me interested in these programs actually back in 
back in the uh, mid 80s, I was actually in school myself. And um, my parents used to give me the choice every year that I, you know, was in school, I got to choose an elective course, something that I guess, as my parents thought, would keep me engaged in school, be a class that I could look forward to every day. And at the time, it was um, a cabinet or carpentry class. And every year I signed up for that carpentry, carpentry class, and I just loved it because it kind of engaged me. It got me out of my seat in the classroom. I got to do something with my hands and be creative. And um, it was interesting because one year, I guess it may have been my 11th or 12th grade year, I was asked if I wanted, I guess 11th grade, if I wanted to um, build kitchen cabinets for a home that was being built by students. And I said, sure, I'd love to. So I built the kitchen cabinets and bathroom vanities for one of the student built homes that were, uh, that were, that was built by students in Montgomery County. And so uh, the 1986 home still has my cabinets and vanities in it. And as a senior, I had a friend that approached me and said, hey, do you want to you want to take a class in automotive? And I said, sure, I'd love to. So we, we traveled off and took this class in automotive and I got, I got bit by the bug. I ended up um, loving it so much. We had a dealership visitation program where um, the businesses allowed us to go and uh, visit a car dealership for two full days. And after living the life at a car dealership, I knew exactly what I wanted to pursue after high school. So um, that's what I did. I went on and became a master automobile technician and just really loved doing that type of work. But um, I also stayed in touch with my teachers and they brought me back in and, and, um, and um, asked me to help out with technical issues because I was freshly trained by General Motors and they were teachers who had been out of the industry for so many years, their skills were were a teeny bit dated. And so I would come in and I would volunteer and do demonstrations. And um, the principal at Edison at the time, Ed Clements, um, came in a number of times to observe what the heck this guy is doing in the classroom. And um, he said, you know, you should consider teaching. And I thought, oh, no, 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 I'm not a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm an automotive. And um, next thing you know, he said, Steve, we've recommended you to be a teacher. You, you know, you need to you need to make this transition. And I was very young at the time. And I said, oh, okay, I'll give it a try. And so I became a teacher and switched my, switched my um, uh, evenings to study at University of Maryland. And so since that time, I've really been dedicated to these programs because I know as a student um, how important it is to, to see the relevance of what you're learning. If there's no connect if there's no connection between the real world and what you're learning every day, um, it's just not as meaningful. And so um, I've had the privilege to oversee the um, Construction Foundation, as you saw, was created as a joint partnership by our business community in 1976, where we had, um, we had uh, various different uh, programs at a number of different schools, maybe a carpentry class at Springbrook and Rockville High School had an electrical program and, and there was an idea by the business community, why don't you pull it all together and have the kids do a project together? It's more important to learn how those different skills kind of overlap and how you have to work with others than it is to just learn that one skill. And so they started the construction of Young American Projects, which is the um, home building program and uh, we're in the process of completing the 42nd home uh, designed and built in Montgomery County this year. So um, a few years later in 1978, the automotive business community came together and said to the school system, hey, wait, you're doing all these cool things with engaging our business partners in the construction industry and um, you know, showcasing their industry. Why don't you do something for automotive? And so they created a licensed used car dealership in 1978 to um, provide students with experiences, again, not just fixing cars, but also being able to sell cars, being able to learn about um, the different uh, roles at a car dealership and learn about the industry as a whole. Um, quite a few years later in 2004, we started the um, IT Foundation where students actually get to learn different skills around the IT industry and um, just last year, 
we created the, the farm, the Hospitality Foundation. Um, just a few things about the foundations. All of the foundations are overseen. They're separate 501c3s. They're overseen by our business partners. And um, many, of, many of you have served on these boards. And um, you, you all are the ones that are best apt to tell us where our schools need to go because you know where the industry is. And so we have, we have representatives that, rep, that, that are a cross section of each of those industries on our board. For example, yesterday we had our IT board meeting. We had representatives from Apple, IBM, Microsoft, um, like the list goes on and on. And these are people who are currently working in these industries and they are the best people to be guiding us and saying, Steve, we need to retool our curriculum. Steve, this is where we need to go in the future. And so um, my job is to, act, is to act as the liaison between these boards and creating the instructional programs at our, um, at our schools. Um, and, um, and then, as I mentioned, the last foundation was created just this past year. Um, that was the Hospitality Foundation. Um, what are we doing now? Um, things have really transitioned with um, COVID. Unfortunately, some of the things that we see as the most important part of our programs in terms of the hands-on and, and the group work and problem solving um, are a lot more difficult to do. So we've moved all of our programs to an online platform. So we have online platforms and every one of our curriculums align with a national, um, a national curriculum it's not the teacher in the classroom that says, hey, here's what we're gonna to teach today. We're gonna to teach about breaks. It's not like that. We have a national organization that says, what do students need when they enter this industry? What do they need to be proficient in? What do they need to be able to demonstrate if they enter this industry? And they create a list of tasks. And from those tasks, a curriculum is created. And so the nice part about these curriculums is that we can make sure that the teaching that goes on at Gaithersburg High School Automotive Program is in accordance with the teaching that goes on at Edison High School and Damascus High School and all the other high schools in the county because we want to make sure that we deliver a quality program to all the schools. The last um, kind of major point with these programs that, that we find very important is the credentialing. It's one thing for, for a teacher to say, okay, I've taught um, my students how to do this and this and this. And for me as an administrator to say, yeah, the teachers have done this, but it's very different when they go out and get outside validation through an industry credential that the teaching and learning has happened at a high level and the student can demonstrate that. And so um, our goal is to make sure that all of our students leave with a credential and um, some sort of a certification so that they can prove um, exactly what they've learned in the classroom. Um, I could probably go on for another um, hour talking about these programs, um, but I would like to give you guys some time to maybe ask me some questions about things that are of interest to you. So um, maybe I'll take a moment to see if you have some questions for me. The excellent programs. I was just curious, how is the interest, you know, like in the programs, high school students or post high school students? Uh... Great question. Um, and um, that's another good point. We, we try to make sure that we're building a pipeline, meaning we have to uh, create interest at the elementary level and the middle school, we try to provide some exploration. And then at high school, we want more intensive, um, you, know, um, you know, exposure to these careers. But once the students graduate, that pipeline has to continue. So we have our partners at Montgomery College, Universities of Shady Grove, and trade schools all on our boards, making sure that they're contributing to where these kids are going in terms of that trajectory. What is the, in, your question was, what is the interest in high school? Um, the construction program has about 200 and maybe 75 kids who are uh, currently studying those programs. Um, the, um, the, the, the automotive program has about 480 students studying those programs. And um, IT, just this year, we ran numbers, and I think we shared them yesterday. We've got between middle school and high school, we've got 20,000 students 
studying the IT industry. Wow. And it's interesting because we very heavily promote automotive and construction, and that's a harder sell in Montgomery County. IT, no problem. You know, we don't have to really even promote it. But we do have programs in the district. Um, you were mentioning um, college. Um, we've developed programs at Clarksburg High School. Uh, we call it PTEC. Uh, pathways in technology where a student can graduate high school with an associate's degree. So we've already mapped all of the courses and we've embedded college courses in those students studies. So they, they will graduate high school with an associate's degree from Montgomery College. So we're looking at all types of students and all types of pathways to give them options to jump on and off as their interests, you know, allow. Wow. Terrific. Great. May I? Oh, please. Well, uh, you know, I want to mention, I know this school. I was absolutely admired when I saw buildings. This is new school. It's, it's enormous amount of money put in this program. I want to tell you, my friends, you know, all this video, it's from school. Even, you know, it's not dealership because it's a lot of car and a lift. It's a school, you know, it's a... <laughs> exactly inside school, all this, you know, labs, masonry, uh, HVAC, electrical, uh, you know, carpenter, it's in the body of school. That's what I was absolutely shocked and more and more. So, and uh, a little detail, uh, Steve, Stephen, I understood, <laughs> excuse me, I understood uh, not everybody who wants to be in a school have this opportunity because school has some, you know, not, uh, you know, people enroll, you know, they send applica mm -hmm. application, but a school cannot. And now it's a second school and, you know, in Montgomery County. Just tell about this one. Couple oh, more. sure. Thank you, Victoria. Yes, um, you're exactly right that, that in some cases, the programs have more students applying for them than we have seats to accommodate. And so the school system is really... Um, set forth a commitment to increasing career and technical programs. So uh, we've just recently designed and built a new Seneca Valley High School in Germantown, Maryland, which will replicate all of the programs at Edison High School. And so we're gonna have all of our construction programs, automotive, hospitality, and um, engineering and IT at Seneca Valley High School. And Seneca Valley High School, um, interesting fact is the largest high school in the state of Maryland. It's about half a million square feet. And so, Victoria, if you think about it, you've been at Edison, which is enormous. That's 174,000 square feet. So you can imagine how big Seneca Valley High School is. Wow. It is huge. So there's been major commitments by the Board of Education and Career Education. And um, you know, at one point in Montgomery County, college was the only option for students. And um, we all want our kids to go to college and we all want everybody to leave high school prepared to go to college. But it doesn't mean that college is an end all. At some point, mm -hmm. most of us have to go to work. So, so it's incumbent upon us to be able to, to allow kids to explore and learn what they're good at and see where they excel and then help them build those skills so that they can be successful in something that makes them happy in life. So my question, this is Bob, my question has to do with, well, have you, over the programs which existed now for several years, uh, have you done a post surveillance after the training is completed? How many students are actually pursuing their careers as a, uh, as a, for living or are they just was curious to learn something? Uh, is any kind of survey was done? Um, you know, that's a really, really great question. And it's been about 10 or more years since our previous superintendent did a, um, a, a, a um, graduate study to find out where the career and tech ed students stood compared to where the students who took a, a, just a, a non-career and tech ed focus. And they found out that the kids who had left after going through at least one CTE program made more money once they graduated. And um, I forget the percentages of students that went into the industry, but they did give us some feedback. Y your point is very well taken. 
I think if you were to look at all of the things that we do and say, Steve, what's one area that you can do better in? I would say it's tracking students once they graduate to know where they go. And we've tried some, um, we've tried some small scale, um, um, I guess, experiments to see if we could stay in touch with students. And we thought that with social media, this is going to be easy. We've got kids' email addresses and We've got the IT foundation, all of these really smart IT kids. Let's go ahead and keep a database as to where the kids are going and how, how successful they are. But it was hard to get a large number of students to report back on where they are. We've been very successful in getting them to report back on their industry credentials, that they're successful with the credentials, but it's hard to track them. We've also worked with Maryland State Department of Education and they do tracking two quarters after graduation, and they give us that feedback each year, how many kids are in that chosen industry two quarters after graduation. So we do get that data, but um, I think your question is like long-term, where are they? We do not have any, like I couldn't give you a solid number saying 92% of our graduates are still in the industry 10 years after graduating. I couldn't do that, but I do know that when we have our dealership visitations, which we, we haven't had this year, of course, but when I go out and visit students at car dealerships, there isn't a business that I go into that the kids don't come over who graduated two years ago, five years ago, whatever, and say, hey, Mr. Bowden, remember me? I graduated in you know, 1998, I graduated in 1996. So I do know um, that we have a lot of students who are entering these industries, but I don't know the exact number. Thank you. Of course. Uh, I'd like to give a Steve, little. Let me ask a question, if I may. I just was going to say, uh, flesh out a little bit for us uh, the business about hospitality with uh, Marriott and some of the uh, big players in Maryland and Northern Virginia. Uh, how involved in that program are they with respect to Montgomery County? That's a great question. Um, you know, Arnie Sorensen, the CEO of Marriott, um, I guess it was about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, met with the superintendent of schools. And we were asking um, Arnie Sorensen, like, what is it that your industry needs? And of course, this is pre-COVID. And he said, you know what? We don't need bus boys. We don't need people to clean tables. We don't need the, we need people in IT. We need people to analyze data. We need people to do some of these other, um, these other um, roles within their business. And so we were able to, you know, tailor a program that focused more on the management side of the business because they felt like the management development was really, really critical for the future of their business. Little did they know what was coming down the road, but um, fortunately we've had representatives like the president of our hospitality foundation is Andy Chavez, and he was a Marriott employee. He just retired now, but he's still in the role of a president of our, um, of our hospitality foundation. We've got a cross representation from that industry as well. David Childs, who runs the North Bethesda Marriott, um, we've got Ted, who is the owner of Kava. We've got, um, I mean, the, the list kind of goes on and on. The owner of, the owner of Matchbox, um, an owner of uh, Chick-fil-A, um, somebody from Medium Rare. We've got Kelly Groff in charge of the Hospitality and Tourism Association. So we have a really wonderful cross-section. The thing that, that just blows me away I think of all the industries that have been really devastated by this uh, pandemic, it's clearly been the hospitality and tourism industry. And um, these folks have been so giving of their time. You know, some of them have, have either retired by choice or not by choice. Um, some of them are struggling to make sure that their hotels meet the, you know, meet the bills and pay the mortgages and everything else. And they still attend all of our meetings and constantly look for ways to say, hey, wait, you know, I can do a video at my hotel and we can send it out to the schools because the kids can't come and visit in person because of the pandemic. So they're still looking for ways to engage our kids in these industries, which is um, just amazing to me. 
Ovira Safai, Comfort Inn in Gaithersburg. So we've got some really wonderfully dedicated people and they're all volunteers. Thank you. Where, where do you get your funding from? Good question. Um, we kind of don't. Um, the, uh, the funding that, um, that goes to our programs comes through, I'm an MCPS employee, so I advocate through the school district to get funding for our program. So if we're building a building, I work with the Department of Facilities to build a building. If, we're, if, we're, um, if we have an older building that needs updating, I'll work with different organizations within the school system to get those supports. If it's something related to the 501c3s, that's different. So sometimes we'll have organizations donate money. I know we've had Marriott, you know, say here's $10,000, you know, let the board decide how they best want to use it. Um, other programs like the Construction Foundation, they actually took an unsecured loan many, many years ago when they first started the program over 40 years ago. And they took that money, invested it in a piece of property, built the house, sold it, made a little bit of money, put that extra money in the bank, bought another piece of property. And so it was basically self-sustaining. So that, that program has been self-sustaining since, um, since 1976. There's also been a number of different grants that we've kind of gone after. And I know that even this organization has provided much support to the students and the program. So, um, uh, the, to answer your question, we are primarily self-sustaining. There is, we're not like a government agency where every year we get a new budget and it comes, uh, you know, comes the next year. So we have to make sure that we run it like a real business and, and do long-term projections to make sure that we're able to have dollars to support the programs. In automotive, I should mention, our lifeblood for automotive is that the community will donate their older cars to us we'll renovate those cars and then the money goes back into the foundation and then they take the money to purchase other vehicles. Um, the other thing that the construction foundation has done for many years is they've, um, they wanted to have a construction management program and Montgomery County Public School said, we don't have enough money to get another teacher to run a construction management program. And they said, look, you're teaching the kids this part of the, the picture with trades, but what are you doing with teaching them the very, very high level part of the industry? School system said, sorry, we just don't have the money because of budgets. And so the foundation bought a class at Montgomery College and said as many construction technology students as want can attend that class and the foundation will pay for it with the proceeds that they made from selling the prior house. So we're constantly looking for, for things um, you know, to, to support the students if you were to ask what things are we looking for now, um, any, anybody looking to contribute, I am right now I'm suggesting that we connect folks with the Auto Dealer Association because they have a post-secondary program. So it was asked earlier, what do our students do when they graduate and how do we track them? One of the programs that we work very closely with is the ADEI program, the Auto Dealer Educational Institute with the Washington Auto Dealers. And they have a program that's completely free to students where we'll help place the students at a car dealership. And then one day a week, they go and continue their studies at Montgomery College in automotive technology. And after two years, they're a certified, um, they become certified automotive technicians. And so, um, you know, if there are, if there are folks who are interested in contributing, we like to can we like to kind of steer folks towards that direction because that gives our students who have been studying a, a real you know um, a, a good a good base in our industry because they're working they're able to get a job work full time uh, feed their families and also continue their education so that they can work their way up in the industry. Steve, um, as, as yeah. being the only uh, 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 Rotarian in this this club that was there in the beginning, um, uh, I watched this process take place. And just for the club members, I want to give you a little bit of history. Uh, the the club uh, worked with uh, one individual in the school system, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, 
but but our club was one of two clubs who initiated the construction trade foundation for the first piece of land we had uh, a, a real estate guy who identified the piece of land to buy we had another person who was in the finance industry who provided the money to purchase the land and to buy the supplies for the house. We had an insurance agent that provided the insurance for the house. Uh, the club's major project was the construction trade, getting construction trades foundation off the ground. So a lot of our money we donated to it, although it was not a great deal of money, it's a lot more than we're donating now because we had, we had a lot more members back then. We were really heavily involved in the, in the and the starting up of the Construction Trades Foundation. And I can't tell you how impressed I've been over the years is how it's grown. Probably Bob Fangmeyer was involved uh, the, the longest of any of our members. He wasn't a, a charter member like myself, but joined early on. And I know he was on the board and participated for years in that. Uh, our club's activity with, the, with, we, with you all has, has uh, dwindled over the years, not anything like it was initially, but uh, I think I think the current members ought to know that we ought to all be proud of, of how we were the foundation to get this thing off the ground. If it wasn't for this Rotary, Rotary Club, and I think of Bethesda Rotary Club, the Construction Trades Foundation, which was the, the, the core program that was initiated, would have never happened without the, the volunteer activities of the members of this club. Thank and, you uh, both, uh, Steve and Kelly. This has been most illuminating and I'll turn it back over to our president. Awesome, thank you. Again, thank you very much. It has been, I learned a lot today about it. Um, so that concludes our meeting. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, which is next week. As a reminder, we will not be meeting next week. I um, mean, if you guys want to log on and talk with each other Friday morning, you can. Um, I just won't be there. Um, but uh, yeah, you're more than welcome. Um, Zoom line is always open. So on that note, everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy, you know, if you are, if you are gathering a family, um, enjoy the time. Thank, All right. Thank you for the opportunity. Enjoyed seeing everybody and appreciate you welcoming us back. Thank, thank you, Steve. It was you. a wonderful presentation. Great work. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. 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 Bye.